Should the church stay out of politics? It's a difficult question. First of all, I'd say no, because the church should be speaking up for the sanctity of marriage, the sanctity of life, Christian values in this Christian country. But on the other hand, I would say, yes, they should stay out of politics when it comes to party politics. You know, Easter is the holiest day of the year. Um, the archbishops should be using this day to tell people about Christ, to tell people that he died on a cross for our sins so that we may live forever. What they shouldn't do is use it to criticize conservative government policy. And that's what's happened today. The, you know, whether the archbishops like the policy or not is none of our business, quite frankly, but to be shifting our religion, to be shifting scripture in order to, to use Christianity as a, a way of shutting down the conservatives is highly inappropriate. And I would say that's quite immoral. Uh, is shipping illegal immigrants to Rwanda ungodly? In what way is it ungodly? All this is doing is saying, look, we're going to stop people dying, crossing the channel. We're going to stop people smugglers, uh, exploiting people. We're going to stop um, sex abuse and exploitation, all the horrible things that go on. We're going to put an end to that and we're going to get a nice um, processing center in a very civilized and um, economically strong country of Rwanda. Uh, that's a very good thing. To say it's ungodly is kind of suggesting that to send people to Rwanda is a bad thing. But we're not even sending them there permanently. We're sending them in there to be processed to find out whether they are whether they have a legitimate claim to refugee status in the United Kingdom or not. And hopefully that will serve as a deterrent to prevent a lot of the illegal immigration that's happening across the channel at the moment. And it will save lives. It will help people and help them in their lives. How could that possibly be ungodly? I think what he meant is, I don't like it. And that's fair enough. He's, he's, he's okay to dislike government policies. What he's not okay to do is to use the church, to use his status in the church to criticise the government. Is the Church of England institutionally left-wing? Is it institutionally woke? Absolutely. So one of the reasons that they've cancelled my ordination is because I don't believe that this country is institutionally racist. You know, I've had a whole class of, of middle class white bishops tell me, no, it is Calvin. You're wrong on this. And I'm like, well, I thought my personal experience would count for something here. Well, we're all about lived experiences now, aren't we? But apparently, no, only if it's the right type of experience. Now, I would suggest there's still racism in this country. It still needs to be stumped out. But that does not make this a racist country or institutionally racist country. And the church will go out there and say, yes, it is. The Archbishop of Canterbury has said that. The Bishop of London has said that. And they have no evidence to back this up. In fact, independent reports do not find any evidence of institutional racism in this country. So I think it's outrageous for them to suggest it is. So yes, I would say the church itself is institutionally woke, left-wing, liberal left-wing, uh, and it's got this moral superiority complex that is not rooted in scripture anymore, and that is going to be the downfall of the Church of England. Uh, it would be a colossal waste of your talents and of your spiritual and intellectual leadership if you were not able to be ordained as a priest in the Church of England. In fact, I think if you got the gig, I, I would be tempted to convert myself just to hear your sermons. Let me tell you, I'm your number one fan, although my Roman Catholic mother will not be happy at that suggestion I've just made. Let's you. bring my panel into this. Daniela Westbrook, Francine Lewis, and also Andre Walker. And uh, Daniela, should the church stay out of politics? What do you think? Well, you know, I'm not too sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult. Any country in the world, there's always... You know, the church has a big say in every country, America, you know, especially in Europe. It's very difficult. For me, I'm not a, a huge fan of the Church of England because it is a, a man-made church and religion, you know, mm. made by King Henry VIII so he could get a divorce and get married again. So <laughs> yeah. for me, you know, you're either, you, you, Church of England, when people say I'm Church of England, I'm not so OK, so you're Christian? You know, what are you? It, you know, it, to me, it's I, I, really I'd say you're almost right there, Daniela. Then. I don't think it was made up by Henry VIII. It was, it was a split from Rome. And there was but he was given it. Yeah, he was given the OK to do it. Because Rome yeah, became, like, yeah, he was given Rome, the OK Rome became corrupt, to Rome became very political. political, and we said we want to stick with the faith. And that's what Anglicanism is, or what it's supposed yeah, to no, be. It's about totally not going down the hyper-political route. I understand what you're saying, but I just think where religion and politics are concerned, it's some, pretty much sometimes one and the same because, you know, most of our wars and everything, basically, they say it's about oil and this, that, and a lot of it's about religion and race and stuff like that. And, you know, we put it down to blaming somebody else for it. But for me, particularly, I think the church does their thing and we should listen to the church a bit more in this country as well. You know, a lot of people don't even go to church anymore in this country, which I think is sad. Uh, briefly, Calvin, the church, and many churches, not just the Church of England, didn't cover themselves in glory by closing their doors to parishioners during the course of the pandemic when they were needed most. 
I know this is another reason that I'm not getting ordained because I spoke out about this and I probably shouldn't have done, but I can't, for my integrity's sake, I can't bite my tongue when I see something go wrong. And I saw that the churches closed their doors. The government didn't say that churches had to close their doors. The Church of England went above and beyond and closed their doors to people in a time when I think we probably needed them more than ever, more than we have in our living history anyway. We denied people access to the sacraments, which is, if you're a Catholic, is, uh, uh, it's, it's evil because people need access to God. But it also denied people access to God's house. And even if you're not religion, uh, not religious at all, the church is the hub of a parish, the hub of a community. It keeps people together, or it should do. And to close your doors to the people says, you are not welcome here anymore. We are not here for you. And that is a great sadness that I, I can't even get over to this day. And I, I think we, we should never, ever allow any government or any church leaders to do that ever again. Of course, Francine, I agree with Calvin when he says that the church should speak out on moral issues, even if they dovetail with political issues. But the actual politicisation of the Church of England, I think, is a concern, as, as Calvin has described it, institutionally woke. And, and the point is that it's a bad idea for priests to be divisive politically because then they're going to split the congregation. Don't you think, um, Francine? I, to be honest, I think um, the Archbishop of Canterbury um, should not be criticising... Um, pol you know, get involved in politics or migration, personally. Um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, politicians aren't getting involved with any of his religious, you know, sermons or whatever. I just feel it, he shouldn't be interfering. That's my, you know, opinion. Well, I yeah, I mean, he be he's raised a lot of people's ire, hasn't he, Andre Walker? Well, I'll tell you what, I was very pleased to read Justin Welby saying today that he was going to move uh, asylum seekers into his new £27 million library in Lambeth Palace. And he was also saying that he was going to remove the Church of England's tax exemption status so they can pay like everybody else for asylum seekers. Oh, dear, he didn't say either of those things, did he? What annoys <laughs> me is these people, picked by the government, by the way, and I think that's part of the Church of England's problem, these people constantly rant on about the fact that I'm being unfair, I'm being nasty to these asylum seekers. They're all tax-exempt. They all live in these grace and favour piles. £27 million personal library. The guy's a joke. Uh, let me recommend Calvin's amazing programme, All About Easter, which went out today, and you can catch it on our GB News app. It's called The Meaning of Easter. You can also see it on uh, GB News, on tw uh, not on Twitter, on, uh, on YouTube. On That's YouTube. right. Uh, the Meaning of Easter with Calvin Robinson. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.